Okay, this video I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, uh, blower motors for wall mount HVACs. Uh, these motors usually use a capacitor as part of them, and the capacitor is a fail point that will sometimes need replacement. So first thing I'm going to do is turn on the power. Always make sure you have any jewelry removed. Right now I'm actually wearing an arc flash suit just for added protection, you never know. Okay, we got 240 volts power on. Um, this is the test setup I had uh, from a previous video. It's just a, an HVAC contactor hooked up to a toggle switch so I can turn it on and off. And then the, the motor is wired up to the uh, contactor and the leads here to the capacitor are just coming off from internally in the motor. I put this on volts AC and we'll just confirm that we have 240 volts power coming into the system. Looks like we got 244. So that's perfect. Put some gloves on here because I'm going to be working with the fan just to slow it down a bit once we turn it on. And I'll show you something. So, first of all, let's confirm that this motor works. We've got the capacitor in the circuit. We've got power. If I flip the switch, the motor's going to start. And you can see it started there in a clockwise rotation. Um, so now what I'm going to show you is uh, what happens sometimes is that these capacitors fail. And when these capacitors fail, the, uh, the motor isn't able to start spinning. Uh, the capacitor provides kind of like a little bit of extra torque boost in the beginning. And that's what would get it kind of rotating. So if you remove the capacitor, or let's say it failed in open condition right now, so you can see I've got it removed from the circuit, uh, you'll usually find a motor that hums pretty bad. So if you come to an HVAC unit, and the blower motor is like really buzzing loud and it's not spinning. That's a kind of a telltale sign that it's your capacitor or it could also be the internal windings of the motor itself. But I would start by troubleshooting the capacitor. So let's turn this on. Okay, it's on. You can see that the motor's not spinning at all. And the interesting thing about these motors is that when the capacitor um, fails open, you can actually uh, get these motors started just by giving them a flick with your hand. So I'll turn it back on, and then if you see here, just give it an ever so slightly turn, there we go, and it'll slowly ramp up to speed. Okay, just turn that off again. And the other interesting thing about these motors is that um, the capacitor and the way the internal windings are, what kind of determine the direction of the motor, and when the capacitor's out like this, if I turn it on, if I flick it the opposite direction, I can actually get the motor to spin backwards. That's kind of neat with these motors. You can get them spinning either direction. So I'll put the capacitor back in the circuit here. Put these quick connect leads back on the, the ends. Okay, capacitor's back in the circuit. Let's just test. Yep, we're good. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to remove the capacitor when the motor is turned on and spinning. And one thing you can sometimes find is that uh, for locations where the, the blower motor has been set to always be on, regardless if the, the compressor is turning off, on and off, or the heater is turning on and off, if the, if the blower motor is on 24-7 and the capacitor fails while it's on, um, in theory, it, the failed capacitor could go undetected because what's going to happen is the motor is going to keep spinning and it's not going to stop until the next time someone actually turns off that HVAC unit or you have a power fail uh, at the location and then when the power is restored, the blower is not going to start turning. So I'll show you this. So we'll turn the motor on. Okay, I'm going to remove the capacitor. Okay, I just pulled the capacitor from the circuit. And you can see that the motor's still spinning, right? So now let's simulate, say uh, you have an AC power fail. Okay, the AC power fail uh, just happened at your location where this HVAC unit is, and your HVAC's shutting down. Um, just stop this here. And then let's say AC power is now restored. If the, the hydro company has fixed the, the power to the site, your motor's not working. So you can see why a capacitor could sometimes go undetected um, if uh, it fails in the circuit. Uh, so now the next question is uh, testing a capacitor. 
Um, this capacitor is five microfarads. It's uh, usually written, uh, microfarads is usually written with a lowercase u and an uppercase f. The, the lowercase u standing for micro and the uppercase f standing for farads. Uh, on some capacitors, you'll see them written uh, capital M, capital F, or capital MFD. Um, it's kind of misleading because typically a capital M stands for the short of uh, mega, so like uh, mega farads. Uh, but it's not. It's actually microfarads in these instances. Uh, the other thing you might find sometimes is that the capacitor has, uh, the label has rubbed off on it and you can't read it anymore. Um, and on the motor data plate itself, it'll probably state what size capacitor is supposed to be wired into it. In this case, the data label also says it's a 5 microfarad capacitor. And what we can do to test these 5 microfarads is you're going to put your multimeter on capacitance. Okay. And I'm going to hook my leads up to the capacitor. And right there you can see I've got 4.87 microfarads. So that's pretty close to 5. Um, a lot of guys say that there's kind of like a 10% tolerance on these. Uh, if you're outside of that 10% range then uh, it's probably time to replace the capacitor. Uh, so, you've tested the capacitor and the capacitor's good. Now the next question is, uh, does the capacitor hold a charge? Uh, and the safe answer is always treat it as if it is holding a charge. But I'm going to show you something here. So, I'm going to put the capacitor back in the circuit. We're just going to turn it on temporarily. Okay, we've turned the circuit on, we've turned it off. And I haven't touched anything. So I'm going to put my multimeter to volts DC because the capacitor is like a battery, right? You got to measure it in DC current or DC volts, I should say. And I'm going to put my leads on here. We haven't touched anything. It's still in the circuit. Uh, we haven't shorted anything out here. And we are reading zero. So there's no voltage here. And now the other thing I'm going to do is remove this capacitor alive. So there's a chance that this capacitor is bleeding itself through the internal windings of the motor, right? Before you get onto the capacitor, it's already discharged itself through the motor itself by still being in the circuit. So what I'll do is I'll uh, turn the motor on and then remove the capacitor from the circuit while it's hot. And that way, you know, you can, you're kind of eliminating that it's discharging through the motor itself. Okay, I'm going to pull the lead, pull the other lead, just turn this motor off. Okay, so we've pulled the capacitor hot from the circuit right now, right? So there's no way that it's kind of discharged itself, you would think. But if you test it on volts DC, you can see right there, we've got 320 volts and it's dissipating. So what's going on is uh, the capacitor is discharging itself through my meter right now because uh, the way the, the voltage measurement works is it's, it's letting a little bit of voltage through kind of thing. So we've got a hot capacitor right now. Um, so the proper way to discharge this would be to take a bleed resistor and short it across the terminal safely in a safe manner so that you know, you're not creating an arc for yourself or anything like that. Uh, but a lot of guys, what they'll do is they will take the screwdriver, the metal shaft of a screwdriver, and short it across the contacts. Now, I'm not recommending this. Um, this isn't exactly the safe method, but I'm going to show you what happens if you don't short a capacitor before you handle it. Okay? You got an arc right there, right? So this thing was storing 300 volts DC. You got to make sure you discharge it. So you always want to treat a capacitor as if it's storing a charge, okay? So you take your multimeter, you got to measure for voltage, and if it's holding a charge, I don't recommend using the shank of a screwdriver. Um, the proper way to do it is to use a bleed resistor and then connect that resistor across the, the, the terminals of the capacitor to safely discharge it. Um, but at that point, you got to remember you're still dealing with a live circuit, so in theory, if you're following safe work practices, you're supposed to be wearing uh, insulated gloves, uh, arc flash rated coveralls, probably a face shield, 
Um, and if that's just by going kind of by the safety law kind of thing, right? A lot of guys out there probably won't do it because they're in a rush to do what they got to do. But, um, you know, safety is the number one kind of concern usually anywhere where you're working. So you always got to make sure you follow safe working procedures. And uh, that's the end of the video. So thanks.